Okay, I'm going to briefly go over my electrical tools. It's for testing electrical systems and components. And for me, this is what I use on a daily basis. Uh, it's my DVOM. I like the cheap ones. A lot of people go for flukes and stuff like that. But if you're working in field service and you leave it somewhere, which it does happen, if it's got fluke on it, the maintenance guy will take off with it. Not saying everybody's a thief, but if they see something that's 400 bucks laying around, they'll generally walk off with it. Anyway, it's got all your basic fun functions. You're going to want something auto-ranging. Uh, if you get a manual ranging or one that you can sweep with, um, sweeping, I mean, if you've got a TPS sensor that's going out and you want to sweep it and make sure that it's uh, working accordingly, um, you're going to want one with a dial on it. But this one serves its purpose. It works out really well. Anyway, moving on to the power probe. This is an old one. Uh, it doesn't have the LCD screen or anything like that. I'm sure you could probably get them on eBay real cheap if you wanted one. Um, you can actually use this and send power directly to a component and operate it. Now the cool thing is, is you can operate relays, you can operate fans, I mean, you can do anything. So if you've got a suspect relay or you've got a suspect anything that's a component, um, you can power it up and make it work and actually visually see it work. And if it does work, you know that's probably not going to be the case. However, one time I had a horn of all things that was not grounding properly and when I probed it, it was pressing against the ground and working. Um, and you can also use this as, well, you're really supposed to um, hook this up to the ground, use this for power, power it up, and it will trip out. However, I work on equipment, and if you power up the wrong thing or the wrong wire, really check your wiring schematics. And if you power up something that you don't really know what you're doing, you can fry a computer. And computers are not cheap. They can go from $600 all the way up to, uh, I've seen them for 4000 And your customer is not going to like to hear that. So anyway, moving on. This is a battery tester. Test, is tr test charging systems and everything else. Um, I just got it, actually. I used to have a wireless one, but... Um, I'm kind of rough on my tools and it didn't make it so well. So anyway, I just picked this one up today and it's a pretty awesome little system. You can get them for around 300 bucks. I would recommend if you're on a tight budget going on eBay and uh, getting them. I've never had any issues with any tools I bought off of eBay. Just make sure that they're not a uh, shady seller and you can tell that by their rating. Um, anyway that's about it pretty awesome piece of equipment uh, it also does 6 volt and 12 volt batteries you can use them on scissor lifts golf cart batteries I mean you, you name it um, and it really takes a lot of the question out if you've got a bad cell or something like that it'll let you know you can however take your DVOM put it on digi uh, direct current voltage and get somebody to start the piece of equipment and you can tell if that battery loaded down is failing. Um, you can also see how much voltage is being put back into the battery with it. Alright, so moving on. When I was looking for one of these, this is a Modus Elite. It's actually one of the older uh, four channel lab scopes. Uh, when I was looking for it, because I work on forklifts, there was zero information for it. There's nobody on YouTube that shows videos of using one of these um, other than Scanner Danner. Uh, and I would suggest looking him up and watching some of his videos. He does um, a lot of good work and there's a lot of information that you can get from that. So anyway, when you do buy one, you can pick one up for around 500 bucks. And when you do pick it up, you want to make sure your screen's good. You want to make sure this is secure. You want to make sure that the battery does charge. You want to look at what version you're getting also. Right now, I think they're up to 14. This is 9.4. And when you get home from working all day and you got a code on your car, this does all the way up to 2009. If you get one with the latest software, it goes all the way up to 2015. Just be aware of that. If you look on here, 
here's all your vehicle stuff. It really doesn't apply for me. Um, there is component tests, but like I said, it's going for vehicles. The thing that I'll use a lot is the graphing meter. And it does all of this listed. And then you've got the digital multimeter. It's the same thing as that multimeter over there. But I trust this a hell of a lot more. Uh, you can also do low amps. If you get a low amp probe, um, uh, it's really too long to go into talking about that. If you want me to do a video on low amps, uh, use them for coal packs or fuel pumps or anything like that, just let me know and I'll do one. But here's your four channel lab scope. There again, you've got low amps, 20 and 40, ignition probe, vacuum, pressure, uh, just everything absolutely everything and it's a huge um, advantage over a lot of other technicians that don't have it and like I said 500 bucks and the most you want to pay for this is 750 it comes with all of this the alligator clips the you know the probe right here these come off right there you can really get in there uh, unless it's a CAN bus plug or a weather packed plug, you'll need to back probe for that one. And if you don't know what back probing is, it's going behind the weather packing with uh, either a T pin, paper clip, I mean, you can use whatever you want. And it'll also come with these wires here, and that's for the different channels, and it'll be listed on here. It'll be color coordinated, right? Pretty, uh, pretty simple. But also, it will come with these plugs, and if it doesn't, you want to make sure that you are getting it. Otherwise, you need to pay a lot less. you got keys for different cars. Um, this is your 12-volt hookup, and it has the AC plug. Right now, i got it hooked up to my uh, radio, and it's hooked up there, right here, just like a laptop. hooks up here. But for this, you can hook it up to the batteries, right? It can only do 12 volt, and it actually says it uh, somewhere on here. Yeah, 12 to 15 volts. So whenever you're running a car and it's pushing out 14 volts to charge the battery, um, that's that's the range that you're going to want it. And it is fused. Now, uh, where is the fuse? Hmm. Uh, I don't know where it is. I just saw it a second ago. Eh, either way. So moving on. Um, here's your AC plug. And yeah, th this is fused right here. All right? You got a fuse, a little inline fuse. Plug it into the cigarette lighter. Um, some forklifts don't have it. Uh, some pieces of equipment do have it. It just depends on what you're working on. But it, it really makes a big advantage over you uh, if you're looking to excel as a technician um, hey, if you got any other questions just let me know and I'll answer them hopefully this helps out everybody that's in field service working on heavy equipment or likewise thank you